Hello, uh, I'm Kyle, and if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of baseball. Recently, uh, Carlos Correa had signed a three-year, $105.3 million contract with the Minnesota Twins. Now, a lot of people think this is a bad contract, because in this contract he has two opt-outs. He can opt out of the contract after the first year, and also after the second year. But I do believe that with this contract, the Twins potentially outsmarted every team they'll be, and may have won the offseason. I have three potential scenarios that most likely happened, two of which have caused the Twins to be one of the smartest teams in the MLB. Before we talk about the Twins and those scenarios, I want to mention a little bit of Carlos Correa. In 2012, shortstop Carlos Correa was selected first overall in the draft by the Houston Astros. In 2013, at single A in Correa's first season of the minors, he had a 320 batting average, a 405 OBP, and a 400 slugging, giving him a 705 OPS. So he, he definitely hit well his first minor league season. The next year, in 2014, with how good he did in Class A, he got called up to High A. In just 62 games, he hit 325 with a 416 OBP and a 510 slugging, giving him a 926 OPS. In 2015, he played just 24 games in Double A, putting up a 385 average with a 459 OBP and a 726 slugging to give him a 1.185 OPS. With how good he did, he then got the call to Triple A in the same season. Again, only playing 24 games, he put up a 726 average, a 345 OBP, and a 449 slugging, giving him a 749 OPS, which is still pretty good uh, compared to his other seasons, but the call-up from AA to AAA is supposedly the hardest, so he still did pretty good. Then on June 7, 2015, Carlos Craig got the call-up to the majors. In his rookie season, he hit 279 with a 345 OBP and a 512 slugging, giving an OPS of 857. He also had 22 home runs with 68 RBIs in only 99 games, leading to a Rookie of the Year that year. Craya hasn't really had a bad season in seven years of playing uh, MLB, putting up a career 277 average, 356 OBP, and a 481 slugging for a career 837 OPS, and having 133 home runs, 489 RBIs, which took him two all-star appearances, and he also won a platinum glove, so he's solid on the defensive side as well. Of course, he did get some help from some trash cans, but he still is a good player. This being said, he did hit free agency this year, and it was kind of obvious that he was going to get a big contract this offseason. But it wasn't the contract anybody was expecting. Getting a three-year deal with two opt-outs from the Twins, most likely due to the lockout. So now let's get into the three scenarios that could happen and why I think the Twins have outsmarted every single team in the MLB. The first scenario, in my opinion, the least likely, is that the Twins have an okay year and Cray decides to opt out of his contract to see a bigger deal. Cray wanted about a 10-year deal worth $300 million going to this offseason, which he did get from the Orioles but decided to turn it down. If he does opt out of his contract at the end of the season, I can very well see him getting a 10-year $300 million offer again from the Orioles, but again decided to turn it down. The team I would most see him going to, in my opinion, would be the Dodgers. With Trey Turner being his last year of the contract, the Dodgers could very well trying to add Correa instead of re-signing Trey Turner. They have the money to give it to him, and it would be a great fit for that team. But another team that could possibly go to and have the money to get him would be the Mets. The only thing, though, if Correa were to go to the Mets, he'd most likely be moved to second or third, but I think it's very unlikely the Mets would pick him up. Speaking, they have McNeil at second and Escobar at third now. They don't have any space for him, especially since they have a couple of their young prospects you know, they have a third base prospect, they have a shortstop prospect, they're looking to move to second, so they would really have no space for Carlos Correa. But I think if he were to opt out of his contract, I could very well see him signing a 10-year, $300 million deal with the Dodgers. Now let's move on to scenario number two. The second scenario I could see happening is that the Twins actually do really well this year and Correa decides to stay with them. They have a winning lineup with Correa short and Buxton in center field. They also just picked up a Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela from the Yankees, who are two very solid bats. And they also got rid of the Josh Donaldson contract, which gave them the money to pay Correa. They also did pick up Sonny Gray from the Reds and signed Chris Archer. So I think they might have a sneaky good team to make the postseason this year. The only thing is I think they could use another pitcher or two, but if they get that, I think they're in a really good spot to do this year. And if they do want to make the postseason, I can very much see Correa decided to stay and not opting out of his contract. Now on to the last, in my opinion, most likely scenario and why I think the Twins could have outsmarted every single team in the MLB and potentially won this year's offseason. I think the Twins gave Cray the two opt-outs to get him to sign the contract, but in my opinion, the Twins are planning if they have a bad season this year, which they probably will, even though they made all those moves I just mentioned, that they will move Correa at the trade deadline to a contending team and get a few top-tier prospects in return. 
Now, there are a few contending teams I could see Craig going to in this scenario happens. The first team being the Mariners. The Mariners are supposed to be a sneaky good team this year, but might still need a little bit of help. I can see if the Twins aren't going to have a good season, Craig going to the Mariners. In return, the Twins get a player like Jared Kelenic, who didn't have a great rookie year, but is supposed to have a bounce back year. In his rookie year, Kelenic only hit 181 with a 265 OBP and a 350 slugging to give him a 615 OPS. But he could be really good one day. Now, if the Mariners are really in contention and really need the help, I can see them giving up Julio Rodriguez. Now, Rodriguez hasn't had a major league at bat yet, but he's going to be really good one day. In just double A last year, Rodriguez bat 326 with a 461 OBP and a 546 slugging to give him a 1.007 OPS. But that's only if the Mariners are in desperate need for a shortstop at the trade deadline. Um, I can't see them doing that unless they really need the help and could potentially maybe even win their division. Another team I see Craig getting traded to is the Los Angeles Angels, where the Twins could receive a guy like Reed Detmers, I think I'm pronouncing the last name right, who is the Angels' only top prospect in the top 100, who didn't do well in the majors, putting up a 7.4 ERA in 20 innings, but in AAA, he put up a 1.13 ERA. Now, it's only in eight innings, uh, but I could see him going to the Twins, maybe them working with him. Uh, I think that could be really good. Now, the last team I could see Craig getting to is the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, in return, uh, the Twins could get Jordan Walker, who was in combined Class A and High A last year, hit a 317 with a 388 OPS and a 548 slugging to give him a 936 OPS. They could also get a guy like Nolan Gorman, who in AAA last year hit 274 with a 320 OPS and a 465 slugging to give him a 785 OPS. Now, Nolan Gorman is also MLB ready, so I don't know if the Cardinals want to give him up, but I can maybe see that happening. And the last player I see the Cardinals giving up would be Matthew Libertor who in AAA last season pitched a 4.04 ERA in 124 innings, which isn't great in AAA, but I think the Twins can really work with him and he can be really amazing. I could see the Cardinals giving up maybe more than one of these guys to put Craig at shortstop to join the infield of Edmund, you know, um, Goldschmidt, and Arenado, which would probably be the best infield in baseball, at least defensively. You have four Golden Glove winners. Um, this, But they would only probably make some move if DeYoung has another bad season or Sosa doesn't plan out the way they want it to. Um, but yeah, this is that's the main reason why I think the Twins could have potentially outsmarted every single team in the MLB and won the MLB offseason. Um, please like and subscribe if you want more content like this or enjoyed. Thank you.